Good morning, Bethel. This is Pastor Travis Schroeder. Hey, it's great to be able to uh, be here with you this morning and be able to, to bring this broadcast to you. Um, I know it's not the in-person church service that we would love to have um, or that we would prefer, but with everyone that has come down sick over the past a uh, few weeks, um, we just decided that it would be best to give a little bit of quarantine for the church, let everybody heal up, and then meet together uh, next week. And um, so right now we're still going to have Wednesday night service, but that's still not 100%. Um, we've got a few that are leaders that are out, and with so many, um, we may end up just starting service back up next Sunday. But for now, keep plans for Wednesday night. Um, if not, then uh, we'll make sure we let everybody know. Um, keep an eye out on Facebook and and uh, and on on my Facebook page. But w would you take a minute and just uh, let's take some some time here and let's pray for those that are sick and down right now that are hurting because um, so many have been affected uh, by this situation and so. We want to make sure that uh, that we're lifting them up in prayer. I'm not going to call them out by name because I don't want to forget anybody for one. Um, and there's so many. Uh, but we're just going to pray in general for this virus and all of the craziness that's going on uh, right now. And so uh, let's, let's just take those moments and do that right now. Lord, we just love you so much. We, we praise your holy name. Lord, we just thank you for all that you do all that you are, Lord. Lord, you just provide the blessings, so many blessings for us. And and even in a time like now when we're separated and we're hurting, Lord, a way has even been made so that we can do this online and still be connected to one another. And so, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that through the trials we still have hope. And so, Lord, I just pray and lift up to you right now those that are sick, those that are hurting, those that are struggling. Lord, everyone that's been affected by this virus, Lord, whether it's themselves being sick, Lord, we lift up those that are uh, home right now and and uh, and going through this with pneumonia and aches and pains and and other breathing problems and and everything that's a, uh, that goes along with this, Lord, we lift up those to you right now that need healing and we pray for healing in their bodies. Lord, I pray for those that are affected, Lord, more than just the uh, the sickness in their own bodies, but for those that are around them, Lord, there's so many that have lost loved ones, Lord, there are so many that are fighting to uh, take care of their family with time lost from work and 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 various things lord and we just lift them all to you jesus lord i uh, i know that you're the hope that we have and so lord we look to that hope today lord i just pray jesus that you would minister to us during this time lord help us all lord to love one another lord as as you loved us lord and not to be divided um, even though there's disagreements, Lord, I pray that you would help us to look past the disagreements and see the things that we can agree on, that we can see that we need to love each other and build one another up and take care of one another to the best of our ability. And Lord, we just thank you for that. Lord, I pray that to, today that you would minister to us, Lord, in the word, as we study your word today, as we look at what you have for us today, Lord, I pray that you would just move in a powerful way in the homes, Lord. Even though we can't have service together, Lord, in the church, Lord, I know that you are everywhere and you are all the time. And so right now in those homes, Lord, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit would move in a powerful way. Lord, I pray that you would manifest yourself, Lord, and I just pray that you would touch lives, Lord, that you would transform lives, and Lord, that we, Lord, would put our focus on who you are and how you are want us to live jesus but we just thank you for it in jesus name amen amen hey uh man i i'm so excited i i love being a pastor most of the time <laughs> um but i love
being your pastor, being the pastor here at Bethel is just a blessing to uh, myself, for one, and our whole family. We are so blessed having such a, an awesome, awesome church to be able to minister to. And Lord, uh, and the Lord has used you to minister to us. And it's just so, so great that we can be there for each other. Hey, I want you to know that you can reach out to me anytime. If you're sick, you're hurting, you just need someone to talk to. Uh, if you're confused about something that I said in a sermon or something like that, feel free to reach out to me anytime that you'd like. And I'd love to discuss it with you um, and and pray with you and, and pray through with you. So uh, please do that. Also, um, I, I just want you to, to know that uh, if you would like, you can go on to our website, BethelAGGJ.org. That's BethelAGGJ.org. And if you'd like to give um, online, you can do it that way. I'll be in my office uh, this week on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, Monday, I've taken some time to spend with my granddaughter, and Thursday and Friday, I'm going to be going uh, with Pastor Bill, and we're going to the campgrounds uh, for the Rocky Mountain uh, Mystery Network campgrounds and do some work, and so I'm excited for that, and we'll be back uh, next weekend, and it's just going to be an awesome, awesome time when we come back together and i know that it's been very disappointing with the events that have been canceled this week um over this weekend it broke my heart to have to not go forward with this missions convention uh the ladies were so looking forward to uh the uh the treasure hunt and so um let's just pray we're gonna um i, I mean we've already prayed but just continue in prayer that all those things, we'll be able to get them rescheduled quickly and uh, push forward and still uh, be able to do those events. So it's going to be awesome. Hey, are you ready to dive into the Word with me uh, this morning? Um, so, hey, this is pre-recorded. I'm doing this in my office. Uh, I, I can do stuff live, but uh, I, I do a lot better live when there's other people there. Uh, so this time I'm doing a little bit of a pre-recording and um, the master on the computer who's getting much better every single day. Uh, but Terry Reeves is going to uh, make it look pretty. So, um, but but we're still going to just jump right here into the word, if you would, with me. So. As you know, I put a title to every message. So this morning, I ask you, uh, the title of the message is a question. What motivates you? Luke 18, 23, the rich young ruler said this. It says, when it, or it says this, when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. It was a, a difficult statement that was placed there in Luke. And, and we talked a little bit about it last Sunday, but, um, uh, and, and honestly, that's not the main focus for the scripture today, but I wanted you to hear that. It says he was very sorrowful for he was rich. Um, there's so many things that we allow to get between us and God. And the question is, what motivates you to get past those things? What motivates you in life in general to get up and do things? Is it money, fame, power, pride, fun, uh, responsibility? Does God motivate you? Uh, why is it that if I say to my kids, let's go to the park, they will jump up and down with excitement. But if I say, take out the trash, um, oh, I don't want to do that. We're the same way with, with church sometimes, aren't we? Why is it that we can't afford to pay tithes, but we can go out to eat at the restaurant after church is over? Uh, why do you get up and go to work every day? Why is there a snooze button on the alarm clock? <laughs> sometimes the motivation is the extra 10 minutes of sleep, right? Um, what motivates us to complain about things? But then what motivates us to not just complain, but then do nothing about them? What motivates you to get up and come to church? Why is it that we do the things that we do? So I, I did an online search and and I came up with some things on what, what some people had to say on an online survey of what motivates them. 
this one says, I will get motivated by an ant. We can learn many things from an ant. It searches for an alternate way when it meets an obstacle. It never turns back. It has discipline and foresight. It knows that it won't get food in the rainy season, so it collects food in, the, in advance in the summer. Last but not least, it feels failure is the first step of success. It won't give up until it reaches its goal. That's a lot of information to get out of an ant. Um, another one says, I am motivated when I achieve something different, especially when other f others fail to achieve. Interesting. It is the honest recognition of a job well done, and it's a well-placed thank you said with sincerity. That That's a good motivator. Um, I want to be I want to become better at my job and I want to help others. I want to be a leader in our field. Excellent. Most uh, people motivate me. I love helping people and making people happy. It brings such satisfaction to see the smile on someone's face after I just helped them in some way. I am always motivated to achieve my goals and to reach our quota so that my boss will uh, will be happy. And I will be happy too. That's a, a good uh, motivator. I'm motivated by my mom. And I'm proud to say uh, she has achieved a lot for a single parent. She has always been there for me and my sister. And for that, I would like to thank her. Excellent. Um, I have always been motivated by my family. Without them, I'm nothing. One thing that I say to myself is be good all the time. And here's one I think you'll really like. It says, I motivate... Uh, <laughs> I motivate myself through RYP. Remember, you're poor. <laughs> you can't afford to waste your time. I say these three words to motivate myself. Remember, you're poor. Um, and the last one I have from the survey says, money. All other answers are lying. They don't like real answers. <laughs> so uh, this person says that uh, money is the only motivator. So, uh very interesting. So I come across a story a long time ago about a set of twins that were raised by an alcoholic father. This uh, man abused them greatly. Uh, that, and when they grew up, one of them became a very successful uh, businessman and the other became an alcoholic, just like his father. And when they were asked why, the successful one said this, that he could not help it. He just could not grow up and be like his father. The other said he could not help it. It's the way he was raised by his father, and that's what he knew. Two people, two people in the same circumstance, raised by the same person, coming to two different conclusions. It's very interesting, isn't it? We do most of the things in our life because it's what we want to do, and we want to do them. It's what we want to do, right? And Or it's what we think we have to do. Some things we don't really want to do, but we think we have to do them, so we do them. These two men grew up in the same house with the same father. They choose two totally different paths. One, because he didn't want to be a part of what he saw, and the other, because he felt like he was trapped, felt like he had to do uh, what uh, he had saw. So uh, it, it's really interesting. Now, we have a lot of things in our lives. Uh, we want to do and and that we need to do uh, from getting a real job to making lots of money to giving our time to help others from getting to up to mow the yard to just going to the store all these things um, we need a little bit of motivation to go and do some people are motivated to drink alcohol and do drugs some want to raise a family some people are motivated not to do certain things they don't want to go somewhere as this uh, one man did not want to end up like his father, and so he was motivated not to go that path, and he chose a different path. So the question from, for you today is, what motivates you? So in Luke chapter 18, I'm reading out of the ESV, Luke 18, 18 to 23, uh, uh, is this story. And a ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and mother. And he said, all these I have kept from my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, one thing you still lack, sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. 
But when he heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely he was extremely rich. He was very sad. Now, I thought you were talking about motivation, Pastor Travis. Hey, not all motivation is good. <laughs> this guy was motivated um, by his money, right? An alcoholic's motivation is the next drink. A drug addict's motivation is the next high. This is what makes the people do what they do. They have to have. This guy, he had to keep his money. He did not want to separate from his money. He, His faith and his hope was in his riches, right? So, um, it, and, and it wasn't just money, but it was right now money. See, Jesus offered him a treasure in heaven. But that wasn't right now. So many people, they uh, they know, they've heard that heaven is a great reward. There's And we build great treasure in heaven. But are we motivated to live a life? Are we motivated to give our life and, and be who God's called us to be so that we can end up in that re reward? Now, yes, yeah, salvation is a free gift. Um, as we, we talked about last week, that you, you can't do anything to be saved. Jesus paid the price. But what are you doing after that? We were created to good works. And so um, we, we've, we've got to think about these things. So, so I ask you, what, motiva what motivates you? Uh, are you motivated to give? Or do you have to keep a hold of the riches that you have? So this guy didn't want to let go. What about tithe? Did he tithe? I don't, I don't know. But Malachi 3.10 says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And therefore, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Interesting. We, we, uh, do we hold on to that which we need to let go of? Are we motivated to let go so that God can pour out in our laps? You know, it's the one thing that uh, God said that we could challenge him in, test him to see if he would not pour out a blessing so that there would be no more need. Uh, and so um, I think one of the biggest issues that we have in, in the church today is uh, we have a lot of consumers, but we don't have any givers. Um, and uh, well, I don't say we don't have any givers are, are few. Um, it's very rare to find in a church where most of the people will give, um, even, uh, with tithing and, and other offerings that it's a difficult thing. And, and so God says, if you want, if you want to have the riches of heaven, you've got to let go of that. Well, I'm going to look at another story a little more in depth um, about someone that needed a little extra motivation. You see, um, this fella, uh, he had a little bit of an encounter with a storm and a little fish. Well, maybe it wasn't a little fish. Let's look at the story. It's uh, the book of Jonah. Um, and we're going to really, we're going to look all the way from chapter one, all the way to chapter three, verse three, I believe is where we stop at. Um, so if you've got your Bibles, um, you can look at Jonah chapter one, and we're just going to look at this and, and kind of go through it uh, and talk about it as we go through. Um, verse one, it says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. Okay, so here's the motivation. All right, God's put a call in his life. I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to tell them to repent. And the motivation for Jonah at this moment is, no, that's not what I want to do. I'm getting out of town. So he's motivated to go the opposite 
direction. Sometimes we enter into a situation where going the opposite direction is probably the best course of action. But when God calls us to something, we need to run at it full force because uh, otherwise um, it could be disastrous. Let's look what happens. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea and there was a mighty tempest on the sea so the, that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God. And they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down to the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. <laughs> that just cracks me up. We'll get back to that. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise and call to your God. Perhaps the, the God will give a thought to us that we may not perish. So these guys are wrapped up in believing in other gods, and he they want him to uh, cry out to his God. These guys are motivated to find out what's going on. Apparently this storm is something different. They're crying out, trying to figure out what they need to do to appease some sort of God. And so verse 7 goes on to say, And they say one to another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us on whose account this evil has come uh, uh, come upon us. What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and of what people are you? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and hurl me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. So, in these moments, Jonah is motivated to try to save the crew and the ship, right? But, <laughs> he's got a little bit of martyrdom going on here, of self-proclaimed, uh, of the self-proclaimed kind, where he's just, he's not willing to lay down his life if necessary. In these moments, he's not even willing to, to talk to God. Sometimes we get ourselves so down that we forget that prayer um, can bring about a lot of answers, looking at the word, understanding who God is. But maybe there's a little bit different motivation here, because think about it for a moment. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh, and his motivation, his main motivation right now is that he does not want to see the Ninevites repent, and he's willing to die for it. Uh, he's willing to die so that other people couldn't be saved. Interesting. <clears throat> Jonah chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord of my, out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall again look upon your holy name. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounding me, weeds were wrapped about my head. And the roots, or at the roots of the mountains, I went down to the land whose bars closed uh, upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you in your holy temple. Those who pray, who, those who pay regard to vain idols, forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed. I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Now Jonah. After being in the fish, the belly of the fish, for a few days, he's apparently got to see some sights. He's down at the base, the bottom of the mountains. He's, he is 
undoubtedly feeling trapped. Um, somehow he is surviving. Somehow that he's still getting oxygen. God has kept him alive for three days. Um, and so my question in this is, why do we have to be in so deep over our heads before we'll start trusting God? Why is it that we have to be sinking and, and not just sinking, but we have to be down at the bottom of hell. That's the Sheol. Uh, why do we have to be at the bottom of the pits of hell before we start crying out for God to save us? Why isn't it we can't be like Peter that just when we start to slip, we turn and we say, Lord, help us. Or maybe we should be a little more motivated and just do the right thing anyway, right? But um, verse 10 it says, and the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. So Jonah ran from God. How many of us have ran from God? <laughs> Jonah got to a place where he was willing to sacrifice himself to save other people, but he still wasn't willing to do what God wanted him to do. Uh, though that I, I've just thought of a story. I'll save it for another day. But uh, um, why, but he he... He was willing to give up everything, but he wasn't willing to give in and do what God wanted him to do. He gets swallowed by the fish. He ends up down at the bottom of the pits of, of the water, the pits of Sheol, and at the bottoms of the mountains. And he finally cries out to God. And then God gave a little bit of fish, or a little bit of motivation to the fish. <laughs> he says, all right, throw this guy up. Boof. So he throws him up on dry land, and, and there's a whole lot more to that story that I'm not going to get into today about why it was so cool that Jonah was in a fish and got thrown up, and what he would have looked like, and all kinds of stuff. There's so much more in the story, but I want to finish uh, this message for this morning for you today. So here we go. So the fish had been motivated. And then we get to Jonah chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. It says, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. So now Jonah is motivated. To do what he should have done in the first place. Yeah, we could save a whole lot of time if we would just do the right thing the right way when we're supposed to do it. Uh, I remember working at a uh, an engine remanufacturing plant and they remanufactured uh, transmissions also. My wife worked on the transmission side, uh, tearing down transmissions. And um, well, they didn't necessarily live up to their full, uh, statement, but, but they, they talked about how, uh, quality was better than quantity. Now we still need to get the quantity out, but if you don't do it right, it doesn't matter how much you produce. If you're not living right, it doesn't matter how much that you're trying to produce because your fruit will be bad, right? Um, there, there was a time where I pointed out why certain things were failing in, in that company. Why there was a, we had a large amount of mouth, uh, um, engine failures. I said, I believe that this is the problem. And the company didn't even want to investigate what the problem might be. They just wanted to continue putting out the product that they were putting out because they needed to get more and more out. They weren't really living up to the statement of quality over quantity because if you can't produce something good then all you're doing is producing a lot of bad right so jonah if he would have just done the good in the beginning he wouldn't have had to deal with all of the bad and then end up where he should have been in the first place right and so he had to go another three days journey right so uh, but it, it took a little bit of motivation for him to get there. Now, there's a whole lot more to the story of Jonah. Um, it's actually kind of a, it's got a real sad ending. Um, but, but in these moments here, we see that there was motivation that Jonah needed. And sometimes it just does take for us to get all the way to the bottom of the pit before we actually get motivated. So my question for you today is, 
What makes you get up and go? What, what motivates you? What motivates you in anything that you do? What motivates you for your job? What motivates you for uh, your kids, your family? What motiv what motivates you? Um, I, I have learned, I, I've, I've kind of got an addiction to this little doodad right here. Um, and I find myself on it a lot, uh, looking at different things. But I found that now I've got this new little baby um, she's not really new anymore. She's going on two. Um, but I've got to take time and put that phone down. Get off the computer. Turn the TV off. Go for a walk. Go for a go play in the park. Um, yesterday, I took my wife out to to go see a movie just so that we could take some time. Yeah, we still sat down and watched a movie, but it was different. We we got out. And it was just me and her to be able to go spend some time together. What motivates you? The things that are important to you are going to motivate you. Um, Jesus told the rich young ruler to give up everything and follow him. What are you holding on to that's holding you from a right relationship with Christ? Is the broken body and shed blood of Christ motivation enough to get your life right? God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, but he just didn't want to. He not only caused himself, but a whole ship full of of folks a lot of trouble <laughs> when we sin we run from God we cause all kinds of trouble huh <laughs> and it's not just us that we're affecting we affect everyone around us then before he was motivated enough to do what God said he had to live in the belly of a great fish for three days seaweed wrapped around his head it was just tough have you been stuck in the belly of a whale long enough that you're ready to pray it through and do what God wants you to do? Is it time to just wake up and say, yes, I am motivated? I want you to listen to these words one more time in Luke chapter 18, verse 23. When he heard these things, he became very sad. He was extremely rich. What are we holding on to? What Jesus is asking us to lay down and to follow him. What motivates us to push forward and do what's right and live for Christ? What motivates you? Pray with me. Lord, I just love you today. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for all that you are. The motivation that you gave me in my life 18 years ago, Lord, when you took my life and flipped it upside down set me on a path to do what was right for you Lord, i pray that we could all have an experience lord today that we would just really be flipped upside down Lord, we would have an encounter with you lord we would begin to cry out lord if even from the belly of the fish lord from from the bottoms of the what seems to be the pits of hell lord i pray jesus that today that we would be motivated to cry out and say lord help me i need you i need you lord i pray that you would be our motivation you would be our strength you would be everything that we need lord i pray for that motivation today jesus and i thank you for all you are and all you do. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you for joining us here uh, online at Bethel today. I am just so glad uh, to have you with us. Um, hopefully you'll get to visit us in person next Sunday. Uh, we'll see you about Wednesday night. Um, but next Sunday morning, I would love to meet you and say hello if it's your first time uh, joining us. If I haven't seen you in a while, or if you haven't, come up and talk to me. Come up and talk to me. I'm still the new pastor, and I just love meeting new people, and I'd love to shake your hand and uh, um, and, and even have a meeting with you if you'd like. Um, but, uh, hey, you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. I hope that you have the most blessed day ever. And again, keep praying for those that are not feeling well. And we will see you at our next meeting. Hey, God bless.